Hello everybody, my name is Rado and you're watching Code Natural. So the first thing that we're going to do is talking about what is Drupal. And this is basically one of our series called Drupal Development. And this is kind of like the start to see what you can basically know about Drupal. So in order to understand what is Drupal, first of all, we need to understand what you can do with Drupal. So let's begin with a simple case of uh, basically your friend has a restaurant and wants to create just a website and show his menu. It's just as simple as that. And he tells you that there's two conditions, that your menu will change and the prices will change of the menu, the dishes. So that's one of the cases that you ha can do and have in mind. Now the problem is basically you just need to create a simple website for a restaurant. And also knowing that you can have the menus and the prices easy to change and basically have an option for uh, updating some of those types. That's kind of like a kind of a hint. So let's see what it can do look like. This is actually a menu from an actual site. Um, I believe it's no room, but one of the things is that you can see there a sample saying that lunch into box, which is kind of like a category of what the menu is going to be. And then after that, we see the name of the menu, basically a classic, and some descriptions of what the menu is going to be. Simple enough to show what it's actually about there. And also, like you can see on the right, it's basically there's going to be a price for it. So this menu is going to be kind of like basically creating data for us to show and have an example of this. We will not follow, by the way, an example of like make it look like this. We're just going to learn the tools uh, with as little code as possible or even modules whatsoever. We're just going to go and handle this with pure Drupal development. Here. Well, we Drupal no code actually. And just to know that the difficulty of this task is going to be just about not experience. You don't need any experience whatsoever. And also it's going to be a no code solution. We're not going to do any code whatsoever on uh, basically on this option there. So you don't need to be programming an expert, nor do you need to know what Drupal is. Just understand that this is kind of like a step-by-step -step options. So for this, we're going to have to use something called content types, which is kind of like the bread and butter of Drupal and also like add some fields in order to understand basically, which is also kind of a bread and butter option for Drupal structures and something called taxonomies, which is kind of a way of actually putting things into categories there. If you're familiar with some of that uh, WordPress type of terminology. Um, so think about it like taxonomies as a chapter of a book that everything comes in there. Uh, content types and fields is basically just the topic that you try to put in a group and encapsulate. It's going to be a lot simpler to do this part. So let's first, let's start with the task of have our tasks ready for uh, creating a content type dish. So first of all, we begin with creating this content type dish to make sure it's part of our menu. Then after that, we're going to add a value for pricing. And finally, we're going to start and end with adding a taxonomy called menu, which is now we can have, it could be kind of like a bento category, it could be a morning breakfast, or it could be something different there. Because, because we know that menu is going to have some different types of uh, categorizations. So let's begin with what we're going to build with Drupal. So if you have a nice... So if your Drupal installation has been installed, you already have a function in one, and this is what you will get once you have a Drupal 10 install, a uh, Drupal 10 site. So if you don't have this option, make sure that your developer or your server is able to provide you with this type of uh, environment. Now we're not gonna use any modules whatsoever, which is gonna handle core. Now the first thing we're gonna go in here is gonna go into content tab, and in here we have an option for adding basic pages or articles. Now, this is just going to be a simple type of template for adding, for example, a page with a certain title and some body content in here. If we go then, after that, we're creating an article, we'll see that there's a couple of things that are different. For example, we have an option for tags and an option for images. This will tell us that Drupal has an option for adding or removing something called fields. And fields are just containers, just small pieces of contain, small components that are added to something called content type, which is kind of like a big group of fields. So keep that in mind when it comes to the accessibility, knowing the accessibility of what Drupal can be. So in order to handle this and actually create our own dish type, we're going to go into structure. 
content types and create our dish content type. Now, this is something that we're going to have. Think of it like a group. We're just saying that, say, this is a delicious, delicious dish. And I'll be good to go. And after that, say, this is a dish for the label. Let's hope this goes promoted into the front page and create a nice version. We don't really need an author and a date because this is more likely the work of, uh, of our chats. Great. Now, if you notice here, we have an option called Manage Fields, which will be kind of redirected to it and have an option for body. If we go again into content and add content, we'll see our dish being available for this. And we see that it has an option for body. But there's a couple of things that are missing. We need an option for a price, and we also need an option for categories. So in order to add those, first of all, let's go in here into Manage Fields again and add a new field. Then after that, let's go ahead and go ahead and select number. Now this is kind of like a Drupal nice navigation. It will actually will tell you what you will need. Let's call this field called price. Now let's see what actually one of numbers will we need. This is either an integer, decimal, or number float. I'll go with decimal because prices, even prices are suggested for this type of to use this type of number. Let's go ahead and continue. Set precision to 10 and 2 for scale. This is kind of like the decimal value that you want to have the digits after the right decimal. Now let's take an option for one because we need only one value for pricing. Also, we'll set up a minimum of maybe one, well, maybe zero because there's really not a minus dollar type of price for burgers. Go ahead, we have save settings. Let's go ahead back into create dish content. Remember content, add content, and dish. I'll skip that option in the future. And we now we have an option for price. Let's just say the price is something very important that we need to have. And we really need to add before, uh, need to add a price before we add a dish. So let's go ahead and here price back again into manage fields. And remember, the way that you go in here is by structure, content types, and then there you go, you find the option for dish. And here, click on manage fields. Then we go into price, edit, and say we have a required field. Click on that and save. If we refresh, now we have an option saying that price is going to be required by this uh, red star in here. The first time we didn't add it, but that's okay. It's always nice to have a mistake or two because we learn from those. So let's set a price for this call, dish call, maybe hamburger. And let's call a description for this call a delicious hamburger ready for you. That's a nice description. And let's say this hamburger is 5.5 by 50. That's a fair price. We save, and now we have a delicious hamburger ready for us. Now, a second thing too that we need to add is basically a category. And the category is basically saying that what where our hamburger is going to be served. For that, we can say that there's going to be probably a lunch hamburger or maybe a dinner hamburger or maybe a breakfast. But let's add a category for that to just let our users know that we're going to have a menu categorization there. For that, we just go into Add Vocabulary for Taxonomy and click on Menu. Or actually just say Menu, Time, or Type. Save it. Now let's add some terms to it. Let's say we have three terms called breakfast. Let's have an option called lunch. And we can also add some description to it. But you can add and think of your own. Great. So now we have an option for lunch, dinner, and breakfast. But there's an option here that we're missing. If we go on edit on our content or even content type, and select our burger, but here in edit, we'll notice that we're missing that menu type option. So there's a way we need to actually connect to it. And if we remember the way that we actually connect and add options is by going to structure, content types, and back again into managing fields. Let's create a new field. And this time we call it reference. And reference, think of it just as a way for Drupal to say, here's something, please point to it and get me that information. 
Let's call it menu type. And let's call it a taxonomy term because it's exactly what it is. Let's select an option for saying that you can have multiple of them because this burger can also like, we have dishes that can be not only for the morning, but also for the afternoon. Let's say an option for menu type, click save. Let's go back again into a dish, refresh. And now we have a menu type. If we click on, we actually type lunch. We know that this burger is going to serve a lunch. And let's also put an option for saying serve a dinner. Let's go back to our site. We have a hamburger ready for us with a nice price for lunch and dinner. If we click on lunch to see what is going to be available for lunch, we have a burger here. What type of burger? Well, that depends on you and the user and what type of restaurant is going to be. Let's go ahead and create another type of like content there because we need another dish for this, for a burger. Let's put some fries in here because burgers and fries actually is a nice option there. Let's say maybe it's 175 and this one is going to be served on lunch. Price for dinner, maybe just too much. Again, we have fries and we have burgers. If we go to the home page again, we have hamburger and fries. We didn't add any description for fries. So let's go ahead and just say them. Maybe say delicious set of homemade fries. And you can put extra description in there for details. Great. Now we have some descriptions. If we go ahead back into the home page, now we have a description for fries and hamburgers. And if we click on them and we go ahead and click on lunch, now we have an option for saying what lunch has. Has hamburgers and has fries. There's another option for adding the price if we want to also make it visible, but that goes beyond the scope of this video. I just wanted to show you that Drupal has a nice interface, a nice way for us to actually manage all of the content types and add new fields that are going to be very useful for your development. Also, here's another thing that is pretty interesting as well. Each one of those content types has an option called revision that you can also see what type of changes you've done for your type of like um, work. So if we go, for example, on revert, We can see that our version of fries is no longer does no longer has a description, and that's because our revisions give us to a point when we don't, we didn't have any revisions there, we didn't have any descriptions. We can go back and say maybe we did a mistake, update back, revert to the option that has a description, and again go back to a fries, and now we have a description back. Now that we have seen some options for categories, content types, and taxonomies, we know that basically we can handle some of the basic options there for Drupal. And that's just a small part of what you can do with Drupal. It's a very extensible type of solution. You probably noticed that this is not only for a website. You can use it, for example, if you want to have kind of like a different store that has different type of category menus, you can use it as an option for creating an inventory in such a store. Say, for example, we need some um, uh, recipes for this menu, and you can use taxonomies as an option for saying what kind of ingredients will be part of this uh, dish. Say, for example, we have a category, a taxonomy that has, uh, say, for example, uh, we have a dish that has, that's just a burger. You can create a taxonomy that has all the ingredients that are part of that uh, many there and you can have different types like different burgers included to it so you can say any type or create a filter system that says that if you have lettuce or you have tomatoes or perhaps a couple of patties or even chickpea burgers you are able to actually have a, a way for categorizing those type of like content types and also one thing too this is all core Drupal this there's no extended modules or plugins for which it's been added to this. This is all done with core Drupal. So that's one of the things that is gonna be your task as when it comes to becoming a site developer, well actually a site content creator. 
uh, Drupal that it's basically creating a structure of how your data is going to look like and then talk to your developers to see if it's a better way to actually display this or if there's another type of option that you can select it. There's always another type of test, like for example, layout pages that you can create your custom uh, Drupal site, but that is something that we can have an option there. Now, usually I try to stay for a while and uh, it's just when it comes to the recordings, but because this is going to be a video, I want to give you the option of writing a couple of like questions of what you need to think of. And if you know, probably noticed, one of the last categories was asking questions. Now, if you ask questions, usually you have a better notion of what you're trying to feel. So if you have, for example, but in this case, I'll ask you a question. And that question is, what would you do if you have the ingredients? Now, if you happen to have a local Drupal development set up correctly, I have a video of it right over here in one of those links, and it will guide you how to install your own Drupal. There's also plenty of documentation on how to get started. And even if you have Drupal, for example, uh, installed on your computer or even in your local server, uh, like HostGator or something like that, then you're basically, you're uh, able to do whatever you're seeing in this video. So thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you later. Please subscribe if you actually like to have more videos like this. This is standard uh, talking about not only Drupal, but also type other tools. And also we can have a more code base intensive type of solution. So thank you very much and have a nice, great day.